cool, what a cool day today. I'm so excited. We have Nick and Mahalo with us. They're going to share with us um, really how to knock it out of the park in a weird, in the weird market we're in. And um, Mahalo, there, there may come a time where you just share your screen instead of do screenshots. So just be patient with me if we right. decide to do stuff, okay? Um, well, well, welcome, everybody. The purpose of this call is, you know, once a month, we do what's called a Workman Success Webinar, where we just invite our clients and also uh, people that have thought about coming into coaching that aren't necessarily clients yet, but want to know what it looks like when you interact with and work with a Workman Coach. What, is that, what does that world look like? And so I've invited uh, two of our stars. Let me open up my, let me see how, which is gonna, how this is going to show on my screen. All right, that works. Let me share my screen with you. By the way, I love all the hellos in the in the box. In your chat box, let me encourage everybody. I'm going to open mine up right now. I'm multiple. I have multiple screens to just say hello and where you're from. And so there's a bunch of people on the call today. Go and say hi. I'm from South Carolina, I'm from California. Uh, I did a on this last coaching call. I was on uh, Nick and Bahal. I was talking to a client in Houston, and we were talking about what are the areas that most people are moving from into your market. And we we found the five top cities that people move into Houston from. And then the next question was, what are the companies that are transferring people from those markets into yours? And this is chat GPT search. And so I'm in my chat GPT four and I'm getting, I'm getting a list of all the companies and the, who the relocation people are and that are doing relocation, driving people's into that marketplace. And it was just kind of fun. That, that's what I, I went down the AI rabbit hole during the last coaching call. And as we were going through it, we were getting, um, uh, we're getting all this crazy information on there. So we look, we got New Jersey, Madison, San Antonio. Welcome. Dallas, Texas. What's up, Chris? Hey. Cross, Wisconsin. Love that. Okay, so here's, I'm going to just introduce to you Mahala Landon and Nick Paynes. Mahala and Nick are uh, both workman clients that have been in coaching for different amounts of time. I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about their teams and where they are and what they're growing. Uh, but I will tell you, they've also... Um, what happens when you when you're in coaching with workmen, when you start to have success and you become a good implementer of the systems and you start to see a difference in your lifestyle changes, then your coach will nominate you to become a coach. And it's a big deal and a pretty intense process that you have to go through to become certified to be able to take on coaching clients. And Mahal and, and Nick have both gone through that process and are, ne are now both receiving coaching clients. Uh, Mahal is the, the, the CEO. She's the owner of the Rachel Kendall team. She's in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're going to talk a little bit about her uh, business and, and how it's growing and some of the tools and resources she's doing to kick butt in today's market. So Mahal, welcome and say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Look, at this, look at this power <laughs> team. I'm, hi, Mahal. Hi, Nick. Nick, yeah. uh, Mahal, tell us a little bit about your team. How many people on your team? What do you guys do? What's the, what's the jam? Absolutely. We are an independent firm in Raleigh, North Carolina. So we service Raleigh, Cary, Durham as our major markets. It's what's called the triangle. So if you ever hear people talk about the triangle, that's where we are. Um, really lucky to be here. Love being a workman, um, success client. It's a benefit to every single person on our team as a way of onboarding and just reinforcing that traditional marketing of uh, real estate and just why the foundational pieces of real estate are so important to create operational excellence as well as really successful agents. Um, right now, we have probably about 25 agents on roster. We've got about 18 to 19 producing. We track that a lot so that it helps us with figuring out how to hire and how to retain and how to um, attract new agents into the field. And making sure that we're using systems like how many leads do we have for how many agents do we have, things like that. Um, I think uh, here it, we do talk a lot about prospecting on our team. We're a Zillow Flex team, but we that's in addition to, not in replace of what makes us truly successful, which is owning our database, uh, prospecting on a regular basis with our team, uh, teaching agents how to prospect. Uh, I think being a part of this team since 2014, and seeing many different markets, um, what truly has made us a differentiated team is that we teach our agents how to prospect, the value of prospecting, and what the strategies of prospecting are. So um, that's a little bit about us. We're on track to do about 493. Burl loves that number. He thinks it just should be 500, but that's what we goal set is 493, but we're just going to crush it. We're already on pace for that this year. It's like, oh, come on, you need to go to 490 and to quit. I mean, we just got to finish. 
you got to put it over the top, right, Nick? You can't be messing around with 493. Okay, so now, Mahalo, you didn't start out owning the team. You didn't start out with the team. Give me your, a little bit of your history. Um, I went into residential real estate. I actually got licensed in 2008 doing project management for a real estate developer, but I got into residential real estate in 2014. I joined this very small team, a local team that had just become independent. Um, I was one of five buyer's agents um, for the Rachel Kendall team and progressed very quickly through that, um, became an expert at becoming a buyer's agent and transitioned into um, a managing director role in 2017 um, and then was positioned to acquire the company in 2020, which was an awesome year to acquire a company. Um, thankfully, as I transitioned into ownership, realizing the value of having a coach and went searching um, for the right coach for the culture of our team and um, very blessed to have Verl as my coach. And he's absolutely helping us um, ride this wave of, I think, what a lot of business owners are experiencing, which is, um, you know, exponential, uh, exponential increase in operational expenses. You know, we're really getting the squeeze. We're seeing that commission compression. We're seeing the margins getting depleted. And so how do we scale our business? How do we grow our business? And how do we not um, you know, sacrifice the culture of our team when we're making um, business decisions. And that's really what we focus on is, you know, team leader development and, you know, how do we continue to grow and meet the needs of our agents as they want to grow with us? You know, it's interesting when we, when we look at things, one of the big things that we try and figure out is how do we measure a win at the end of the day? Like, what does a win look like? What are the things you actually track? And so I asked Mahalo to maybe share some of the things that she measures and what she tracks and then how we celebrate wins as a team. Should I go to the next slide? Sure. Oh, my agile. So this is actually, um, this is something that we use at the top level for our team. Um, you know, when we're working in a firm and when we're teaching agents how to be designated buyers agents and designated listing partners, we are the director of the ship and we're here to remove impediments and to make sure that we're staying focused on the dollar producing money making activities that happen on a day to day basis. So we use our agile more at a top level. Myself and my growth manager are working out of this. It keeps us from um, moving away from the target. And so right now we uh, make sure that we have our three focuses. One is listings. Uh, we need to be driving our listings through different pillars of um, focus. Uh, we need to focus on recruiting. Um, as a Zillow Flex partner, you know, recruiting is a really big deal. And then the other piece of that is agent productivity. So those are our three top agile um, goals. And so everything that we do has to align with that. So we, that way we don't lose focus of what it is that we're trying to achieve. We've got to stay within those three top priorities and then everything else just becomes tactical. Now, for those of you, there's a bunch of workman clients and coaches on the call. Um, Mahalo, this is just when I showed this to you, you're like, oh, I'm all in. I'll just do it your way. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I was very stubborn. Um, <laughs> and I actually loved one of our coaches retreats that we had when we really broke down that the workman success program is is about baking and it's not just about cooking and you got to follow the recipe to the T in order to get the most out of the systems. So um, of course I wanted to do it my way and I was super stubborn about it. And um, through a lot of encouragement, um, Marty and I have really leaned into doing it the right way and focusing it. Um, I think that it does take a little bit of time to make sure that your agile is really um, tight to what it is that you're doing because otherwise it, it it distracts, but I think once you have it honed into those top three priorities and then building everything else below that, um, it becomes a very useful tool. How many of you are like looking really close at what her priorities are, what she's focused on and saying, oh my gosh, that's, you know, you want to know how to get from hundred to 200 or how to get from 20 deals to 30 deals. It's the same process, just different activities. And so we do a business plan and a strategic plan. And then we say, okay, in order to accomplish that, what are the activities I think one of the things that makes us probably different as a company is that we're tactical. We're not fluffy. It's not, oh, what should you do? It's like, what specifically are you going to do today and how do we move things forward? Um, it, when you come into coaching, and this is uh, really important, is you get access to what's called a CSU dashboard. Tell us some of the things that you're tracking right here. What are we looking at? Now, what, now, this is a real screenshot of your real numbers. This isn't like 
what you did back in the day or a demo for Sisu. This is like, this is what we look at. We bring this up on every coaching call and we go through this together. Yes. Um, so this is actually a snapshot of literally two days ago. And what I love is that I actually know that we've already changed those numbers because um, I looked at it first thing this morning. And so this is the the beginning, the Sisu dashboard. And the nice thing about being a workman client is that this is the same as what we get as a free um, a free package from Sisu as a result of being a workman client. We do have a, a paid subscription, so there's a little bit more in transaction management, but you can absolutely just use this dashboard for what you need. Um, so when we're looking at this, absolutely looking at conversations, um, appointments set, appointments met. Um, if you notice that that top number, that's where we actually are, and the bottom number is where our goals are. Now, I can't see the date range that was pulled on the screenshot, shouldn't have uh, any decimal places on that because if it was pulled out for the entire year. But whenever Verl says, well, how are you doing for your listing appointment set? You're so far below. How are you going to impact that? We made the decision that we needed to hire a listing partner. Um, and so that became one of our sprints that we did within our agile was finding the right listing partner to hire. And I successfully was able to hire that person within 30 days of that call. Um, but it does help you align what you're doing in your agile to where you are within your numbers. Um, I could look at that and say, well, we also need to help increase agent productivity. And so we launched a contest with our listing agents um, where we're doing 20 conversations a week only to sellers. They have to be sellers. And I want to know who they are, what address, what's their phone number, and what's their email address. And so whoever gets to 120 seller conversations within a six-week period, they'll win something. But then the gift for me as the business owner is I'm going to take that list and then I'm going to retarget that list and I'm going to do some direct mail to that list and I'm going to support them in their activities that they're doing. And so then we really have that collaborative partnership of why it is that we're working together because it can't just all fall on your agents. You can't just say, go do this. It has to be like, how do we win together? Um, and so we'll either have a lunch or we'll do some kind of recognition for those agents that hit that 120. And it really helped us focus and make sure that we weren't um, chasing buyers because um, that can happen for the team. And we really just honed in on what we needed and that supports where, where I'm at on my agile, which is growing our listings. So when I, when I look at this and just from a, so from a coaching perspective, if you want to know how we coach to it, we look at how many conversations does it take to set buyer and listing appointments? And then we do the math on that and we start seeing what our uh, conversation to appointment ratio is. And if we need more appointments, we need more conversations. We It's predictable. We know exactly how many calls we need to make to make a conversation, how many conversations we need to make to get appointments and where we have a, where we have a, um, where we have a gap, then we go in and we coach to the gap. Here, someone's, Rob says he's confused. It says 16 out of 71 is 22%. So you... the actual, for that one, Rob, the top number is our actuals. The bottom number is our goal. Um, and so with Sisu, you can plug in your individual goals for your agents. So when they look at their dashboard, it's reflecting their progress. That's what those radio dials are for, is your progress to the goal. You'll notice for our closed and forecasted volume up at the top, we're actually in yellow, which means we're on pace to hit 160 million. When you see the blue, it means you're not on pace. And when you're at the red, it means you've hit your goal. So it's pace versus goal. Um, that goal can also be based on the time frame of where you're looking. So if I run it just for the month of March, I can say, okay, this agent has a goal of 12 listing appointments met, and this is how many they've had. And so that's where that percentage comes. Hope that helps. And this just shows, this is just our sales dashboard. What do we sign? What do we have under contract? How many have we closed? What's pending? And so in this dashboard, we're able to see, are we on track, not on track? Look, what are the, uh, what are the mountain charts I'm looking at at the bottom? That's a three-year running. Um, and actually, you know, like I mentioned, I joined Workman in 2022. Um, we were always really a culture and skills-based company, but with the dynamic changes of the market and how things were changing at a business level, um, I actually remember looking at this screen and saying, I, I got to start course correcting really, really fast. So looking at your three-year averages, it has always been a tradition of our company, but I love how CSU helps reinforce that because you can see the difference in 
you know, I don't chase volume, I chase transactions, so to speak. And so even though we were hitting our numbers in a volume capacity during the pandemic, we were decreasing in our transactional um, goals. And that was just, that was a trend that I did not want to continue to have as I was um, shifting gears and growing the company in a different way. You know, I think a lot of us get into real estate and we're like, we don't really realize that it's going to become this business. Um, and that was the same for the Rachel Kendall team. It was a mom and pop shop. And then I took hold of it in 2017 and started making changes to create a structured organization. And now we're at a place where we're no longer going to be this, you know, this boutique firm. We're actually going to allow for growth and expansion and, um, you know, relaunch the brand in 2024. Um, so looking at those three years and uh, it, not only looking back, but looking forward and how you want to change the way your business is running. So how do you, so how many of you want to guess what Mahala's disc profile is? Anybody, <laughs> anybody want to guess? Or do we have a, do we have a DC here? Are we talking about someone who loves the details? How do you keep it fun for everybody? One of the things I love about the way you run your team is it's fun. How do you, how do you keep it that way? Well, we are in business because we believe one plus one is three. So our collaboration and the way that we work together as a team is the most fun part of our team. Our sales meetings are high energy. We're always running a contest. So I have um, five very special team leaders and they have buyer's agents working with them. And we do group prospecting four times a week. Each team leader runs a group prospecting event and anybody can join, but everybody has to join at least one. Um, would love for there to be more participation and we work to grow that too. But last uh, month we ran, uh, we goal set for the month and the teams competed and they had a conversation goal and whoever had the highest um, percentage to goal, which we had one team that hit 99% of their conversation goals. And so we were able to reward them. They all name their teams. We do that kind of fun contest and um, it's just, it's, it's really just recognition. I don't think anybody enjoys the the lonely part of real estate. And we just remind our team every day about why it is that we come to work every day. I, I just think that's so important just from a culture perspective to have fun. And and I also don't know, notice if you pick this up and Nick, this is probably something that uh, we'll talk about at some point too, is um, the way that you create opportunities for other people to become leaders within your team. One of the challenges we have when people leave teams or they leave brokerages, it's because they no longer see there's an opportunity for them to grow. And so when that opportunity is put a dam on it, the Bible calls that damnation, it's the, the progression is stuck. Uh, we have to be creative in finding ways for other people to have growth. And Paul has done that uh, masterfully by allowing her uh, high performers to build their own teams within her team. So she takes a little smaller piece, but the pie gets much bigger. That's right. And and what's come from that in the last two years has been really special. I feel like it's actually brought our team closer together and it's allowed us, we were really stuck not being able to get past about 20 agents and just, so now our, our retention is improving because of that, you know, extra layer of leadership within the team. Excellent. Um, talk about the focus on the four pillars and how that's impacted your business. I think the four pillars are probably the most important thing for an agent to understand. So most people, don't, so a lot of people don't know what the four pillars are. We should probably define it. For us, uh, and I don't think we define it any differently, but our four pillars are income is where the agent is going to achieve 100% of their goal for the year. So if they're doing open houses, they have to create action and activities that would reinforce, let's say, we want 24 transactions in a year. So, okay, let's create a plan that allows us to hit 24 transactions just from our open house activities. Um, this was one thing that I learned from working with my team on the four pillars is people take things really literal. Um, and so it's important to make sure that they understand like you don't actually have to do an open house in order to make that a four pillar because you can geo farm and you can call and you can um, door knock and there's so many activities that go on within the team. We have open houses every weekend. It doesn't matter whether or not you're doing it or not. There are activities that you can do to generate open house leads to help you achieve that 24 transaction goal. And so each of our agents, some of them are pretty automatic. You know, if you have a brand new agent, they're just gonna plug right into the open house or the lead opportunities that the team provides. But then our team leaders are 
are developing, you know, different expireds and withdrawns, or they want to work with divorce attorneys. And so that's, again, going back to what Burl said, we owe that to our members is to develop their business the way they want to develop their business and support them from a brand and a marketing level. I think it's so important that everybody understands that there's four pillars of income. Each one has to get 100% of your income goal. And you did a great job of articulating that. We talked a little bit about prospecting. How often are you doing prospecting nights with your team? By or the way, these are cool graphics. I haven't seen some of these. <laughs> your your team helped with these. I, I was a little on the fly this week, but we do group prospecting four times a week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there is a group prospecting event going on. Um, we goal set for number of conversations uh, to achieve in that hour block, uh, how many new appointments, how many follow-up appointments, um, lender referrals, we track those. Uh, we have four great strategic lending partners on our team. And we also track how many referrals or leads that we've created, especially so that we can count our top 50 um, calls that we're making during our group prospecting events. Because when we're calling our top 50, our goal is to identify a new buyer or seller lead within that conversation. So it really allows, it doesn't matter what pillar you're working on, you can create goals and you can help help the agent see how that one hour can really move their business forward significantly. I, just for a second, how many of you feel like uh, your teams would do better if they actually did one prospecting night a week? <laughs> like seriously, and she's doing it four times a week. You wonder why, what the difference is between average and exceptional, it's that the, the exceptional do the activities that the average know they should do, but they don't execute on. And so like, we know we should do it. I love that you're nodding, Allison, because you get it. But, and that, you know, right, you get it, but now you have to do it. And so we have to do the prospect. You have to go as a team and you got to prospect and get in and get it and get into it. So um, I just think that, so what do you, so as good as you are, Mahala, what are some of the challenges that you run into or find running a team? Is it all, is it all uh, roses no. and rainbows? No, and actually Nick and I were chatting about that because I, the one thing I love about real estate is there's so many ways to achieve the lifestyle that you want to achieve. And for me, running a team and being involved in team activities, it lights me up. And it is absolutely the thing that I love most about my career. But it doesn't always come with challenge. I mean, we lost an agent today because they just could not wrap their head around quitting their full-time job in order to double down on their their own career in real estate. And it frustrates me. You know, I get really worked up about it the same way most business owners do. But at the end of the day, we're here to help people that align with your mission and your vision and your core values. And when you have that synergy, that's when the goals start happening. And sometimes, yeah, you're going to lose people or you're you know, not going to be able to meet the needs of every single person. I think that's why we get frustrated about running teams, but really that's, that's just part of it. And it's um, not allowing for your culture to change. Like what Burl said with the group prospecting, I believe in it. I believe that's what helped me become successful and what other agents on the team have had success for. But if you compromise that because you're allowing for people not to do something, well, that's really you as the leader. And so we don't allow for um, a lack of participation. We never, we just eliminate the excuses, right? And so we create a culture that helps people choose the right choice for them to hit their goals versus, you know, making somebody do something that they don't want to do because that's never going to work. So teams are, they can be small teams, they can be large teams. You're always going to have a participation. Um, but that's our, I mean, we're salespeople. We got to sell it. We got to sell our teams. We got to sell the reasons why we do things. And we have to make sure that people find value in every single thing that we're doing. Nick, do you agree with that? You think we're in sales? I, uh, I wholeheartedly believe we're in sales. <laughs> well, Paula, thank you for sharing so much so fast. Um, stay with us and we're going to give everybody an opportunity to ask questions and to be interactive. And let's introduce Remax with the Alliance team or Nick Payne's with uh, Remax Alliance team. Nick, tell us a little bit about your team. Yeah, so um, we're constantly changing. I'm I'm uh, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. We actually only have four members now on our team. And uh, um, we're going through when I first built my team, uh, I kind of built it the wrong way. And so now I'm unbuilding it so I can build it back the right way. Anybody um, else? Anybody else go through that where you did it wrong first and now you have to fix it? Like Nick, yeah. you're not alone, brother. 
Yeah, and, and it's okay. And and by the way, I, I appreciate everybody being here today. I'm excited. Um, I'm going to talk about some cool stuff today. And um, and I and I have something that I think you can take with you today and go get a deal with today. So like, hang on, don't leave early. Stay till the end of the call because I, I have some stuff that I, I'm just so passionate about that I love uh, that I'm going to talk about. And okay, I think you could take it today and go get a deal. I love that. So, um, Nick, you became a you became a, a a high adopter of some things that we share with our clients that other people don't really focus on. And uh, you've been getting some pretty amazing results. I'd like you to take us through some of the ways you look at the shift modules, how you're using it, how we role play it. Let's like take me through the the, the paints team. Yeah, yeah. So the um, so the shift modules for those of you who um, have access to who, who are coaching or, or are in coaching and have access to the shift modules, I highly recommend you go in and check out um, all of them uh, because the majority of them are currently relevant um, and very relevant. And so uh, the ones that I specifically look at right now are the interest rate offset system and the stop, drop, and save system. They're my two favorite uh, scripts. And I can tell you the stop, drop, and save system, I I don't think I'm over-exaggerating by, say, by saying I use it every day. Now, obviously, I've adopted that script and I have... Um, kind of made it my own because I talk about it every single day. Uh, but it's not just relevant to buyers, it's relevant to sellers as well. And so one of the things I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about is just like what you can do with that particular script and how you can take that out. And I and I really believe earn business today. Like find somebody who is has been on the fence. Um, or maybe you've got a listing. Anybody got a listing that's that's kind of sitting in this market right now that we feel is like just a tough thing to sell right now. I've got a client. She's having her 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 best year right now, but she's got nine active listings, a single agent, nine active listings, and she's stressing because she can't, they're not going under contract. She's in Florida. Market's a little different in Florida right now. And uh, you know, you gotta be gotta be a little bit patient, but you also gotta be a little bit creative in the ways that you're marketing your property and you're selling your property. And so the stop, drop, and save system allows you to to do that. And so um, bro, when's a good time that I can screen share and walk through how I go through a stop, drop and save, uh, script. I think now, now's a great time. I'll stop sharing my screen. You, you go yeah. on and share yours. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to go through the whole script. Okay. I'm just going to give you the, um, I'm just going to give you the kind of the gist of it. You guys can see my screen here. Stop, drop and save. All yeah. right. So when you go into the shift module, guys, the, um, the shift is going to have a bunch of tools in there for each module. And so in this case, you've got the stop, drop, and, and save system. And this is the story. Okay. So there's a story in there that talks about the the kind of the client's realization of the, the strategy that we're going to use. Okay. And then within that, you're going to see it here. Okay. You can see that we're going to have a stop, drop, and save story. We're going to have a script. Okay. And then we're going to have this calculator. Okay. Now, for, for those of you who haven't seen this script or haven't gone through it, it's pretty simple. The stop, drop, and save calculator or the stop, drop, and save script is about uh, temporary buy downs. So everybody familiar with the 2 one three two one buy downs? Okay. Everybody using them? Not okay. everybody, but it's okay to do a general description. As if yeah. If you're not familiar with it, okay, get familiar with it because this is one of the most powerful things you can do in the market today. Okay. A temporary buy down is using seller concessions in order to front load a, a interest savings to the buyer, okay? So a 2-1 buy down, for example, allows you to, if you've got a 7% par interest rate right now, a 2-1 buy down will buy the rate down by 2% in year one, and then 1% in year two, okay? So if you look at our calculator here, what you can see is a 2-1 buy down here, Okay, on a four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar property with a ten percent down payment, a concession of let's call it ten thousand dollars could be applied towards a two-one buy-down, in which case the buyer will save five hundred and forty-nine dollars per month in in year one, and two hundred and eighty-one dollars per month in year two, and then in year three it'll go back to seven percent interest rate. But how many of you feel pretty confident that in the next two years, we're going to have a refi opportunity for our buyers? Okay. 
very, very confident, right? We feel very confident about that. So what we're doing is instead of doing a full rate buy down, where we buy it down over the 30 year period, which $10,000 may get you from 7% down to maybe six and a half or six and a quarter, we're buying it down temporarily and we're front loading the savings. Okay. And what happens is that buyer gets to take advantage of those savings right up front and then they get to refi anyway. Okay. So I want to show you the conversation that I'm having with people. Okay. That shows them how powerful this is. And I'm actually going to present it like I'm going to present it to a seller because a lot of these people, a lot of people right now are using this as a buyer script. But what you'll see is you'll understand why it works for the buyer. But now I'm going to show you how I, I work it with a seller. Okay. So I have this conversation on listing appointments. One of the things that I do uh, when I list properties in a, in a high interest market that we're, that we're in right now, I suggest coming right out the gate with a concession to the buyer. Okay. And so what we do is we artificially inflate the price. So if the, if the, if my uh, client, for example, wants to get $475,000 for the property. Okay. What I'll do is I'll say, let's, let's sell it for 485 and then let's give a 10 K concession right back. And I'm going to show you why this is so powerful. Okay. So if we look at a $475,000 purchase price, okay. That interest or that uh, principal and interest payment that the buyer is going to be paying is $28.44. Okay. Now, if we, instead of doing $475, let's say somebody came in and made an offer of $465. Let's see how much that moves the needle for the buyer. Okay. A $10,000 reduction in price. Let's see what that does from a monthly payment standpoint. It's going to take you down to $27.84. Okay. So your monthly savings is $60. Now, let me see if, you know, those of you who are on video, for how many of you are working with buyers right now where $60 a month would move the needle for them? They'd, they'd get off the fence. They'd be like, man, 60 bucks a month cheaper. Let's go buy that house. How many people? Okay. We got a few that maybe 60 would move the needle for. Okay. $60 a month is not moving the needle for me. Okay. $60 a month is a handful of cups of coffee. Okay. It's not moving the needle for me. Okay. But if instead of doing a $10,000 reduction from 475 to 465, we kept our payment at this 2844. Okay. What we can do is we bring this 475 back up and we give a $10,000 concession instead. Now what happens is we have the ability to fund a 2-1 buy down for that buyer. Okay. Which now, instead of saving them $60 per month, we'll save them $549 per month for the first year. So now let me see, how many buyers do you guys have that $560, $550 a month would move the needle? Okay, that would move the needle. In the second year, it's gonna save $281 a month. So overall, they're saving $10,000 in the first two years of their mortgage. Now. This, if you look at this little line, I added this to our buy down calculator, okay? So if you look in the first instance, a $10,000 price reduction saves you 60 bucks a month or $720 per year. Now, let me ask you, you as a consumer, would you rather save $720 per year for 30 years, which we know you're not gonna own the home for 30 years, you're not gonna own the mortgage for 30 years. So it only lasts as long as you own the mortgage. Okay. So for however many years that is, would you rather have $720 per year? Or would you rather have 10,000 in the first two years? Brilliant. Like the okay. way that you're, the way that you're describing it is brilliant. Mahal, are you leaning in on this too? Yeah, I absolutely love using the shift and we take it going back to what we are known for. We take this in, even into our prospecting calls um, sometimes like what Nick is doing and, and getting down into the weeds and the details of everything, but sometimes all you have to do is just drop the opportunity on a prospecting call to get the appointment or to get in the door to meet with that buyer or the seller. And that's what I love the most about shift is that it empowers people over the phone to say, would this be of value to you? If I could present an opportunity for you to still get under contract at less than a 7% interest rate, um, and just hook them that way. Keep going, Nick. This is I, I love the explanation of the way you've yeah. thought through. And you know, so, because Dave asked a question, but you're you're showing how you would show this to agents. You're doing it right now. So just Dave, stay with us and listen how he's explaining it to agents. This is what he's doing. So, so what we're looking at now is this last line here is a delta, and all this delta is is how long 
in terms of a price reduction, would it take to recoup $10,000? It would take 13.8 years at $720 per month. Okay, so again, would you rather have $720 a month for the next 13 years? Okay, or would you rather have 10,000 in the next in the next two years, right? So anybody who knows anything about money knows that net present value and future value of money, you take the money now and not the money later, right? And so what happens is when you sit down and you present this, right? And you, you can fully understand this. And the cool thing is if you're not familiar with 2-1 and 3-2-1 buy downs, it's not a gray area. It's black and white, okay? This is the exact number that any lender will tell you is the cost of a 2-1 buy down as long as the purchase price is 475 with a 10% down payment and a 7% interest rate. This is, it's a it's a calculation that's all it is. And so you can give these same numbers that a lender would give and what you can do is you can go to your seller and say, "Hey, let's give a $10,000 concession toward a 2-1 buy down and let's incentivize this this listing right off the gate." Okay, we're right out the gate, because what we can do here is we can show buyers, we can tell buyers how much money we're saving them in the first two years versus a $10,000 price reduction that's not moving the needle. Okay, so when we're talking to our agents and we're role playing, we're going through this, the role play process here is I make my agents pull out this calculator, this spreadsheet, and I go, I give them a number. And I say, all right, uh, I want to list my house at 550,000. Tell me how we should market it, okay? And what I'm looking for that agent to do is go, you know, hey, Mr. Seller, you know, I know you want to get 550 for the property. I'd like to show you one of the different marketing techniques that, that we do and what sets us apart from some of the other agents. Instead of listing for 550, okay, and eventually potentially having to go through a price reduction, what I'd like to do is I'd like to create some incentive for those buyers right out the gate to get in and get their monthly payment cheaper. Because right now, let me ask you guys, are buyers, are, are they price sensitive or are they rate sensitive? Rate and payment. They're rate sensitive and payment sensitive. The, the, the human brain doesn't really comprehend big numbers, 500, 800, a million, you know, 500, 800,000, a million. We don't comprehend that. We think of it, our human brain works in a way that we, we budget on a monthly basis. We don't budget on a yearly basis. We don't budget on a 30-year basis. We budget on a monthly basis. So we're, we're, we're rate sensitive and we're payment sensitive. So that's what we have to overcome. Okay. If you're dropping from 475 to 465, you're not overcoming the concern. Okay. Because A, it doesn't do much. It doesn't do anything to the rate and it doesn't do much to the monthly payment. So what happens is we're overcoming the wrong concern by doing a price reduction. But if we can address the rate by going, Hey, we'll get you a better rate for the first two years, or we'll get you a better payment in the first two years. Now we're addressing what everyone seems to believe is the number one objection, which I believe is probably the number one objection in today's market for buyers, which is interest rates are too high. I can't afford the payment. Would y'all agree? Yep. So how do you, uh, how do you practice this? Okay. So we sit down and we say, whether you're working with a buyer or a seller, right? You're working with a buyer. Okay. If you're working with a buyer, what is the, what is the script? Well, the script is to talk to that buyer about what types of homes we're looking for. Okay. Instead of coming to me and say, Hey, do you think we can get this 475 for 455? It's, Hey, do you think we can get a concession at, you know, for 20,000? Can we get a concession for 20,000? We've got to under, make our buyers and our, our sellers understand that a concession is significantly more valuable than a price reduction at this point. Okay. And so for buyers, we're looking for properties that might have been sitting on the market a little bit longer than opening weekend, right? Can we go in and get a $10,000 price reduction from a buyer? Absolutely, right? Because we know that their next reduction, when they don't sell in the first two weekends, we know that that seller's next reduction is, you know, going to be in that ten dollars to $20,000 range anyway. So if we can get them on a, on a concession, we're going to be put our buyers in a much better position than a price reduction, okay? So um, sitting down in our weekly meetings and our in our daily huddles and going through this just on a daily basis, talking about uh, over and over and over again, this is practice, right? Perfect practice makes perfect, right? And so the idea is, and it's just about repetition, 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 repetition. So with role play, it's just gotta be done over and over and over again. If you're not having these conversations with your buyers every single day, then you need to be role playing it every day, right? 
And so I challenge each of you to do is take this calculator, work through it a couple of times and start calling some buyers and start using it, implementing it in your day-to-day -day business and finding somebody that, that this moves the needle for. I, mean, I go to any of my listings that are stale also. And, and instead of reducing the price 10 grand, do a $10,000 concession, let's do a two-one buy down list and then take everyone that's looked at the property. You know, it's funny because buyers will qualify for more than they're comfortable with knowing, you know what I mean? So they qualify, but you know, just because you qualify for more home doesn't mean you're comfortable with it. This allows those people that are on the fence that are thinking about moving forward, but they just feel like they're pushing their budget too high because they know they're going to get a rate or they, uh, they know they're going to get a raise. They know they're going to have a cost of living. They know they're going to get a bonus. It allows them to move forward and feel comfortable with, with a lower rate for the next year. And then two years, knowing that things are going to change for them financially. It's just a, it's really a brilliant, it's a brilliant yeah. uh, shift module in and the way that you're describing it. So how you use you know, it? I want, to, I want you to get into the role play volume. All right, you got it. So the, so the next way that we role play this is because you may not have somebody that you can work with. I'm super excited about this, right? So this is my favorite thing Workman's done, like, I don't know, since I can remember. I love this. Okay, um, Workman created a role play bot. If you guys haven't seen this yet, if you guys have not been in, and actually I'll just go back to, to where it was. Um, so when you're in Workbench, you're just going to have a, you're going to have a tab in your Workbench. Okay, and it's going to say role play bot. Okay, so you click on that tab, go into your role play bot. Now my internet's decided to be slow, so that's fantastic. All right, so here's your role play bot. Okay, so you go into your role play bot and you can prompt this role play bot to have whatever conversation you want, right? So I have pre, I've kind of pre-done a conversation that we're gonna we're gonna put in here so you guys can see it. Um, just know that the role play bot does not respond the same way every time. So even though I have a pre preemptive kind of conversation that we're going to have with it so that I don't have to sit here and type, um, it may give me different answers. So we're going to see how it goes. So this is how it works. Let me mute it because it will talk back to you. So we're going to start off with a prompt where we're going to tell the role play bot that uh, you are going to play the role of a seller with an expired listing. Okay. You think that your house didn't sell because of high interest rates and we're going to do a difficulty level 10. OK, so um, the agent is trying to set a listing appointment. So what you have to do is you tell the role play bot okay, what you're what you're trying to do and what objections you're looking to overcome. OK, so you can see here he didn't it, it didn't sell due to high interest rates. Um, I'm trying to get an appointment. Um, he's very close to disconnecting and the agent will need to provide very compelling argument to keep me engaged. All right. So this is what it looks like. Let's run this real quick. So I've got just some prompts I'm going to copy and paste in here and hopefully they 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 follow through with me. All right. So this is Nick from the Med Homes team I'm calling about a property on 123 Main Street. Are you the owner? OK, what is this about? Pretty typical about maybe somebody that that picks up the phone or they may say something like, uh, hey, you're like the 13th person to call me. OK, so um, I put in something like this here. Uh, I know I'm not the first person to call you. Let's see here. Um I'm going to change this first part here because, again, it didn't respond the same way. Um, let's see here. I know your, uh, let's say, I know your listing expired last week. <laughs> and I know a lot of sellers are worried about high interest rates, okay? So... <clears throat> My only question to you is if your prior agent gave you options to help buyers overcome those high interest rates at very low cost to you. Okay. I'm not convinced that any small incentives would have changed the situation, right? That's leading right into what, what, I, what I'm talking about. These aren't small incentives, right? So, um, so I'm going to use, just for the sake of time, I'm going to use my preemptive thing here. We use a pricing system that allows us to offer a concession to the buyer. The buyer can use that concession to pay points on their mortgage and decrease <clears throat> uh, their overall rate. We also have the option of doing a temporary buy down, which significantly decreases. Okay, guy still says, "Well, I'm skeptical. Um, how significant is the temporary buy down you're talking about, and what does it require from my end?" Okay, so in this case, um, I have a response that is that's a great question. Can I give you a real world example of how this works? Okay. 
So you can see there the, the bot is a level 10, so it's kind of abrasive. Okay. So what I do is I kind of confirm in this case what, what happened. So your original list price was 600000 then you made a price reduction to 570K, 575, and it uh, still didn't sell, you know, correct? And then the bot will, will, you know, agree with you. So what I do is I take out the shift module. All I do is I take that shift module and we put it into play. Okay. So what we just talked about from a buyer's perspective, a 25K in price reduction is worth about $150 a month in the form of a monthly payment. However, instead of making a price reduction, okay, if we offered a 25K concession instead, the buyer could use that to do what we call a three, two, one buy down. And in this scenario, it would lower their payments by approximately $1,000 per month. Okay. So let me ask you this. If you were a buyer in this market, would $150 per month uh, savings be more enticing or $1,000 per month? Okay. So right here, well, when I, when you put it that way, $1,000 a month is certainly more appealing than $150, but I'm still selling at a lower price, aren't I? Okay. How does yeah, this These are good objections. This is like a real conversation. This, I mean, guys, I if you have not used this bot, it is so dead on. I'll tell you, levels eight, nine, and 10 are dead on to what you're going to hear when you call like an expired. They're dead on. Okay. They're going to give you real objections. Okay. And so what you can do with your teams and what you can do yourself is go through these at levels eight, nine, and 10. And if you get stumped on an objection, just know you, you may not be re ready for the real thing, right? Like, because these objections are real. This is a very realistic thing here. Like, you know, I can tell from this response that the bot doesn't quite exactly understand, right? What I've, what I've done, which is true to a seller. They're going to be like, I don't quite get it here. Um, I'm still selling at a lower price, aren't I? Well, no, you'd be selling at the 575, right? So I have a preemptive response that's somewhat good here that we'll use. So we'll see here. Um, all right. So the benefit that you were willing to sell your house at 574 before we still sell it at a net of 575. The difference is that the buyer is in a better position than they were with just a price reduction. Okay. And then keep in mind that this was just an example. We may not have to use the entire, entire 25K concession. We might be able to get away with 10 or 15. Depends how we want to approach it. Okay. So it's an innovative approach. I appreciate the creative thinking. I'm still not convinced it's enough to counteract high interest rates out there. I mean, what if the house doesn't sell? Then I'd be giving even more of my profit for nothing. Tell me what else can you offer to ensure that my house actually sells this time around? So think for a second, like what, what could you do in this case? Right. And so here, here's what I do. Um, here we go. I love that you asked that question and I give them some proof about my listings. Okay. In the last six listings, we've had three of our listings take this approach, offering concessions right up front while three listings wanted to start with a high price and reduce as we go. The three listings offered concession right up front had an average days of market on market of five days and three, the other three averaged 45 days. I'd be happy to send you the addresses and the properties so you can see for yourself and even connect you with the clients for a testimonial of our work. Okay. All right. Send me the information. I'll look at the properties and consider speaking to your previous clients, but no promises. I'm still very hesitant to drive back to into another sales process. If what you're saying proves to be true and substantial, then maybe we can talk about setting up an appointment and discuss it further. Okay. So you can see this is a tough, this is a tough guy, right? But I know that, uh, um, so what I can do here, I'm going to go for an appointment and I'll see if I get it. I don't, I don't know if I'll get it. So appreciate the opportunity to earn your business. If you like what you hear from my clients, would you give me the time to meet? I might be open to a meeting, but I'll be truly impressed. I'll need to be truly impressed to hear what I see. Make sure you provide me with all the details so I can do my due diligence. Okay. At this point, I ask them for their connection and then, or their uh, email, and then I'll, I'll finalize with this. Okay. Which is. That's all I can ask for. Details are headed your way and I'll follow up in a, in a few days. Thanks for your time, right? Right, because I know that the details that I'm going to send him are going to be exactly what he needs to hear, okay? And I can promise you that no one else that called him on an expired call, no one else had this conversation. I guarantee it, okay? So this tool is so powerful to use for your team. I get like, I'm like, I got chills talking about it because I love it, right? And I just love going through different, role play things and and try to beat it on level 10. And if you can do this and get through on a level 10, I promise you, you are far beyond above and beyond anybody else that's making those prospecting calls or making expired calls. 
I love the feedback too. And like, here's how you can improve this. Is what your feedback is perfect. Yeah. The feedback is the feedback is great. Right. How many of you like want to like play? This is how AI is changing the way we do business and work. We're doing so many things with AI and our tools and resources and the way that you access data and have access to things. It's really leveling the playing field. Um, let me ask you this, Nick, how great uh, are these tools if you don't use them? They're not great at all. They're horrible. <laughs> I don't mean to be rhetorical, but like how many people do you know inside of even workmen that know and have access to the same tools, but they don't use them? Yeah. Yep. All right. So let me give you a, here's, here's resources for everybody. Go grab the QR code. We're going to give you the straight offset and also stop, drop and save the entire program. You can download it. You can use it. You don't have to be a workman client. We want you to get access to it. Uh, we want you to get the agile that Mahalik showed as to how we think strategically through things. And then if you don't have a client yet, if you don't, if you don't have a coach yet, um, Nick, what's been the value of coaching for you in your business? Just um, like, really, how has it impacted the way you think and the way you operate? I mean, I'll, I'll just, uh, I think the best way to, uh, the numbers kind of speak for themselves. My my first year of coaching, I increased my GCI $226,000 and uh, I didn't work nights and weekends. And prior to that, I was working every weekend, every night. Um, and that was in my first year. And in my second year, uh, it was, I had similar similar results, um, but uh, that was actually pulling back and building a team and recreating and in a, and in a slower market, right? And so um, it's been, it's been life-changing. Having a coach has been life-changing. What I think it's interesting is you're working on things that you're interested in more now. That's the things that get you up in the morning instead of listing and selling houses. You're like working on things that you're truly folk that really, you know, get you excited. And yeah. I love, I love this. I love to see that. All right. Let me just take a minute and open up the call. We've got about five minutes, oh, three minutes left. Um, to any questions or comments or uh, things you have that you'd love to ask Nick or Mahala, uh, what, you guys, what do you think? How, do I really appreciate both of you sharing, you know, what we track, how we do it, what we measure, how we prospect as a team, the, um, the, the reality of how you're using one simple shift module to change uh, how we get more buyers engaged and sellers off the fence and how we're going after expired. It's like, it's like this, it's, to me, this is like what it's all about. It's really about the tactical things of how we're doing things. Great information. No questions yet. A lot of love. Uh, Burl, we did have a uh, we did have a question in the Q and A, which was how and when should I find a coach? Um, when is now or yesterday? Um, and, uh, how I think they can go just to the website and, uh, and, uh, set up a free consult to talk to somebody about your business and how they, uh, and, and just get a better understanding of what our approach is to, to coaching. I think, uh, yeah, that's great. And you, when you go to the QR code, one of the options it'll give you, it'll say, Hey, do you want to, um, you want to schedule a coaching consult? And Chris just signed up yesterday. Christopher, welcome to the family, man. Um, Thank it's, you. Thank it's you. exciting. I want you to know that uh, Dan was so excited when you came on board that he kind of went to the office. He was he he said to me that if I let you off the phone, Burl says I don't love you enough to help you. And I love right, him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited. Well, we're excited. We're excited to have you. And you've got an incredible group of people that um will help you grow. Like this is the real deal. This is not fluffy stuff. And uh, just get into it. All right. So everybody, thank you so much for being here. Mahala and Nick, thanks for sharing and being so willing to share your thoughts and what you're really doing that's working in your teams and business. Uh, any final thoughts, Mahala? One thing you would tell everybody they ought to do if they, it'll make the biggest impact, whether uh, they're or not. I think whether you're a single producing agent or you are a team, um, the value of having coaching is helping you have that partnership and making better decisions about your business. Um, it's just too overwhelming to do it all by yourself. And if you're really looking to level up your career and your success, then partnering with a coach is the way to go. Thank you so much. Final thoughts, Nick? No, uh, I think just uh, just having a coach, having a coach as early and as often as you can, because it's uh, if, if I would have started with a coach, I'd be way past where I am now. Uh, I wouldn't have had to try to rebuild the wheel so many times. And so, uh, yeah. So what's the weather where you are, Mahala? 
Uh, it's a beautiful 70 degrees. We're having little spring teas. We've got cherry blossoms and dogwood trees. This is the lovely week before pollen <laughs> hits. So we enjoy it and then we hide again. <laughs> look, look outside my window. I don't envy you. That's not that's, that's not a picture I want to see. That's headed our way, bro. We're, we're already closing schools for tomorrow. <laughs> I love it. All that snow fills up the lakes, you guys. Have a great spring selling season. I encourage you to just go for it. Follow coaching advice. So those of you that are in coaching, those that aren't yet, come on, let's go. Now's the time. It's not the time to sit on the sidelines and hope things change. You got to make it change, just like Nick and Mahal are doing. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.